Welcome to Pegging Coffee Talk. Here are your hosts, Oswin and Lord Knight. Today, um, I've been seeing a lot of things dealing with like energy, attracting like energy, and oh, let's just put out nothing but good energy, because that way we get nothing but good energy back. Uh, all right. So what are your thoughts on that? Well, I don't see it that way. Um, I do think like energy is attracted to like energy on the same plane of existence. Okay. And on different planes of existence, opposites attract. That makes sense to me. I don't know how far we can delve Uh, into that, but okay. All right. Well, think about it like this. Imagine having a magnet that you can break in a half. Mm-hmm. Now, these two magnets, one, all the energy is traveling in the same direction there. Okay. I'm following you so far. Right. Energy comes out of the north, bends around, and goes back into the magnetic force. Okay. Makes sense? So, so every everything on that one magnet all the energy is going to go in the same direction. Like energy attracts like energy. Makes sense? So far. Now, if we look at our two magnets, to get the two magnets attracted to one another, you have to do opposite energies. Make sense? Yeah, I remember doing that in school. Right. You know, you had to have your north and your south facing each other for the magnet to actually pull itself together. Right. So if this otherwise, is... Because otherwise they repel each other. Right. Again, if we think about it like this, that the northern half of the Earth is one part of the sphere and the other half is the southern. Okay. Even in this situation, what? You got in the north, all the water goes down counterclockwise, and in the south, it all goes clockwise. Right. So the energy flow in the north is slightly different than in the south. Well, I guess some people don't realize that, but yeah. Right. It's just a bigger whole entire concept of a magnet. Makes sense? Yeah. I mean, because there's all kinds of magnetic flows and pulls within the earth itself. So right, it's just one big magnet. Right. So I don't have a problem with this concept when dealing with realities. All right, but what if you're not dealing with realities? Well, when we're dealing with like this reality and we talk about like energy, attracting like energy, what most people are talking about is if you're around someone and they're in a good mood, then you become in a good mood, right? Most times, yeah. Right, if you're around somebody that's in a bad mood, you could, you yourself could become a, you know, in a bad mood too. Uh, Yeah, I've seen that happen. All right. Now, this is how this theory about like energy attracts like energy. If I have positive thoughts, then everybody around me will start having positive thoughts. All right. All right. But let's get a little bit more specific. Think about like high school. You had your jocks. The jocks hung out with jocks. The stoners hung out with stoners. All the geeks hung out with other geeks, so forth and so on. Right? Right. Right. This is, again, another of this thing that makes people think like energy attracts like energy. All right. That makes sense. Basically, those who like country music will kind of gather together because over over their like of country music. Right. This doesn't seem to be hitting you quite well, does it? Well, no. I mean, I, I get it. I mean, I know you get it, but what holes do you see in this problem? For me, there's a balance. It's got to be a balance of energy. You can't just have strictly one type of energy. Well, let's think about this for a second, okay? Let's think about the two people. we got one person in a good mood. you got one person in a bad mood, right? Right. Now, the thought there, again, like I said earlier, that is if you are in a bad mood and you go into a room and everybody's happy, The idea is that they'll make you happy, right? Just like if you go into a room of a bunch of depressed people, they'll make you sad. Well, that's the idea, but... That's the idea, all right? But there's a problem there. I have seen 
and have experienced this myself, and I'm sure a lot of other people have, a person comes into your office or into your workplace and they're in a bad mood. Mm -hmm. Even though there's 10 of you in this area, mm -hmm. right? Counting the one person in a bad mood. So you got nine against one, right? Right. Now, according to like energy attracts like energy, this one person should not be able to make these other nine people sad or depressed or even mad, right? Right. But that don't always happen, does it? No. Sometimes that one bad person can come in and infect all other nine people. And the opposite is true. Those nine people could be depressed, and that one happy person comes in and makes the whole place happy all of a sudden. Next thing you know, y'all are too busy joking around to realize how upset y'all were to start off with. I've seen that happen, especially after, like, you've had one of them uh, meetings at work where the boss says something to piss everybody off. Well, yeah, but isn't that, I mean, isn't that basically the balance of energy that I was talking about? Nope. According to the theory of like of this, you know, like energy attracts like energy and manifest destiny, the nine people should be able to outweigh the one person that's not in the same mood as everybody else. Right. But like I like I was trying to say is that it doesn't always work that way because you've got to have that balance of good and bad or positive and negative energy. It's that whole yin and yang. Well, quit, so for, thinking, for, quit thinking about balance and think about will. This okay. is really a demonstration of who has the stronger will to influence reality. It has nothing to do with balancing energies or not energies, because, again, energies on the same plane really do move together. We've already demonstrated that in the magnet. The energies we create might cause ripples in that. <laughs> right. This whole entire concept of like energy attracts like energy, that if you're in a good mood or if you're happy or you've got positive thoughts, that means positive things are going to happen to you. It's not real on a metaphysic level. Psychologically, this concept works majority of the time. Okay, well, it's, I, it's, I I I'll give it at least 65%, maybe 7%. I get what you're saying about the wheel. Yeah. But I still see it as there has to be a balance somewhere. Well, again. So for you're... every, but I'm just saying for every three times that somebody walks into a room of 10 people and those 10 people influence that one person, there's got to be at least one time when it's the opposite. Yeah, but haven't you met them people no matter what in the world's going on? If they're in a bad mood, they stay in a bad mood. If they're in a good mood, they stay in a good mood. Doesn't matter what the world's going on. Yeah. Their will's strong enough to, not to allow other people to influence them. All right, that makes sense. All right, because again, when, we're talk, when we talk about balances of energies and stuff like that and having to get into that, that's personal. These are subtle things that will affect you personally versus a group. Because again, we also have the whole entire concept of the horizon. And basically we t tell people, hey, look, if you're depressed and you're looking from the horizon down, you're sending out your negative energies, it's hitting the earth, bouncing back it onto you, making you even more depressed. Right. If you look at it, the horizon and upwards, that sends that energy out and away from you. You're just sending all your negative energy to be recycled. Right. And that's not just a theory that I can tell. I can tell you from experience that works. Yeah, but it works because when you're looking at the horizon up, it causes you to interact with people who oh. which which then means your chances of interacting with someone who might have a stronger will than you to put you in a good mood. Oh, absolutely. Do you see how this don't work? Because, again, we got these nine people against one. Right. And, the way I, and the way I understand manifest destiny is that these nine people believe in the way that they do should be able to influence the whole of reality in that one spot, but it doesn't always work. Makes okay. Sense? So, yeah. 
Yeah. I mean, just like, just like, okay, when we look up, man, when you look at Manifest Destiny, you're going to see something that came out of, you know, the expansion of America to the West. It was right. an excuse. It was a nice little catchphrase, the whole nine yards. It's not real. It was just a manipulation of ethics and morals to make people feel like they're justified in doing this. Right. Does and it, then the, I, the I, phrase I think, got buried and then it got resurrected again, but as a different concept. Now, again, I'm not saying that this is wrong or right. Does that make sense? I'm not right. judging the whole manifest destiny and expansion to the West in America. I'm glad we did it. And I love our country and the whole nine yards, but that was an excuse to make these people feel justified and to get these people to move to the West and do this. It, it was a campaign. That was it. All right. But now we have people in the craft that want to take this concept and try to make it a reality. Basically, the idea goes, the more people you can get to believe in a concept will eventually completely, utterly alter reality. All right, give, give me an example. Sitting there and just by virtue of saying, uh, for a man to stand there and say, I'm a woman, the, the, the idea behind this is, is that they automatically become a woman. And the idea of uh, manifest destiny is if we can get enough people to believe this, it will come true. If we can get everybody uh, in the world to believe that men can become women and women can become men just by snapping their fingers or by virtue of saying so, it's true. Uh, this is how this works. Suppose, okay. but it don't. Because there's no magic in the world other than the source itself that can alter the physical rules of nature and our universe. Well, in that case, could it theoretically work on something that can be changed? Yes. Something that can be changed. Yes. You can't sit there and believe yourself or get everybody else to believe that you're a fucking squirrel. You're not going to change a squirrel. You're still going to be a human. You just got a big fuzzy hat, you know, Right, and as a man, I can't get pregnant. Right. But no, if but, it was something... But you could use affirmations and stuff like that to change your thoughts to, today I'm going to be a better person. Today I'm going to help somebody. Okay. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. So in that, can... sense, in that sense, manifest destiny can be a reality. Right. It does take some time depending on, you know, affirmations and stuff like this. They work. They work on a psychological level to continuously to remind yourself this is the way you want to be. OK, but that's not that's not manifest destiny as no. you as you said it. That's just changing your reality. Manifest right. destiny requires multiple people. Right. It requires multiple people. The more people, the better. The idea is, is that that larger amount will outweigh everybody else. It's the same argument we hear over initiation and, and self-initiation. You can sit there and claim self-initiation is real all damn day long. At the end of the day, those of us who do do initiations, we don't believe it. Right. It's not going to alter anything. It's to us, it's never going to make self dedication a viable, real, legit thing. All right. And again, this is just concept. So if you can't even change a concept, what makes you think you're going to actually be able to alter reality? Hmm. You're question. never going to you're never going to get the Muslim countries to believe the way you want to believe. You're never going to get Russia. You're never going to get anybody else in the world to believe exactly the way you do. All right. I, so, so in that sense, it's also back to the original topic of like it. Yeah, of like energy attracts like energy. Again, it doesn't always work. It doesn't always work. I mean, again, it's it's like the joke. You get ten Southern Baptist Dickens in the church, and you ask them all what they think of one verse in the Bible, how many answers you, how many different answers are you going to get? Uh, as many different deacons as you have. Exactly. Every, <laughs> every, see, because again, everybody thinks that when you're a part of a religion or part of a coven or whatever, that you have to think with inside these rails and you're not allowed to go outside of them. 
Right. But yet we keep on showing this is an out and out lie. Right. right? I mean, with most of the most most of the covens we know. Well, most of the religions I know, there's uh, yeah. very few of them that rattle you on your knuckles because you didn't say enough Hail Marys. Right. But there are some that are um, really strict like that. Oh, there are. I'm not saying that they're not. You know, I mean, even we even have really strict pagan religions. <laughs> well, yeah, that's true. You know, let a man let a man try to join a Dianic group. <laughs> yeah. What what do you want me to say on that? You know, snowball's chance in hell. <laughs> <laughs> do you understand how in the world this will never work? Manifest destiny don't work because there is that one person. Yes, these these people that we're talking about might be few and far between. But there are a whole lot more of them than we give ourselves credit for. Right. Where they have a stronger will, where they, I've seen people come in and influence from meetings to board meetings and stuff like that by just simple suggestions or comments. So basically it does come down to, it's a matter of will. Will alters reality. Again, it still cannot break the rules of reality. In other words, there's no spell. There's nothing that's going to make the sun work backwards. Right. There's no way you can sit there and pray a mountain away. Or change the rotation of the earth or, it's, you know, right. anything along those lines. Well, and, and again, you know, everybody limits their consciousness. Like we, we sit here and we like talk about the earth and its biosphere and its environment. Mm-hmm. All right. It is a um, ecosystem. For some reason, everybody seems to think that our biosphere is where our everything ends. They don't seem to realize that Mars and Pluto and the sun and even poor old uh, Uranus way out there is part of our ecosystem. I mean, that this is part of our ecosystem, that our universe is actually part of this planet's ecosystem. So they all influence the Earth. Right. Everything, because there's stuff outside our solar systems that interf that uh, influence those planets. Those planets often influence the way the Earth moves around the sun, blah, blah, blah. Makes sense? Okay, yeah. It's not disconnected. Again, when we're sitting there and you're sitting back going, okay, well, you know, hey, what's our influence there? Oh, we're only influenced by the sun and the moon and our planets. No, we're influenced by a hell of a lot more than just that. By our constellations and stuff like that, we're influenced by a hell of a lot more. And if oh, you think... I was going to say, there's that science again. Right. And if, you <laughs> think, and if you think at a moment that all the people in the world Believing that the universe, you know, is going to work some other way is going to change that. It's not. Make sense? Yeah. But no, I, I don't see how this works. It makes no sense to me. Because again, like I said, you still have those people that break the mold. So if you have an, ex and I'm sorry, if you have an exception to a rule like this, there's no use in having the rule. Well, that's what I was getting ready to say was something along those lines because there's always an exception to a rule. Right. One exception is fine. But when you got 50 different exceptions, what's the point of the law? Okay, yeah. Do you, what's the point of the concept? Yeah, because then you've, you've changed everything. Right, because you keep on making exceptions. I mean, it's like taking a concept... And if we think of a concept, it's like a recipe, right? Mm -hmm. You remove one ingredient, one or two ingredients out of that uh, recipe, that recipe is going to fail. So if you take a concept like manifest destiny and this like energy, like energy, and start showing, you know, all this different things where it's not working, are, are those exceptions to the rule? If they are, how many do we have? Right. To the point to where, you know, the whole entire theory is absolutely useless. And then what do you do? Come up with a new theory? Exactly. You come up with a new theory. And my theory is, is that this like energy to like energy isn't like energy to like energy. 
It's stronger souls with a better sense of themselves and of their own will and what they want overriding all these other people. Yeah, I can, I can see that. You got that little mousy guy over there. Yes. I think that man and that woman can change to become a force of nature with a stronger will than the original person. There's nothing stopping anybody from doing this process. No, absolutely not. I, I will agree. Yes. Someone has to be willing and ready to accept some of these concepts before they can actually start making changes. Yeah. I mean, if there's no, if, right. If you can't if, coerce somebody into it, you, they have to be willing. You have to be willing. I mean, just like me and Brigantia, me and her have opposite views on this. I'm never going to get her to believe the way I, I believe by badgering her. No, no, you're not. You know, now again, one way or the other, me and her been going back and forth, giving little snippets of going, well, this is why I don't like this concept. This is why, you know, why she does like this guy. I don't have a problem with this. This is just regular debate to me. Right. But it makes both our theories even better in the long run, I think. Well, sure it does, because, I mean, she's she's standing by what she believes in. You're standing by what you believe in and you're clashing a little bit, but you're giving strong arguments. Right. And you're, you're reinforcing your own beliefs. Right. Now on this like energy, like energy for those who it works for a lot of times, and this is going to sound really ugly and just to kind of keep people in their lanes, I guess, to a certain extent, just because you can influence your friends does not mean that you necessarily have a strong will. It just means you have a stronger will than your friends. Right. <laughs> just because I have a strong will and desire myself, I know there are people out there that have a stronger sense than I do. <laughs> oh, absolutely. All right. I know there are people that have stronger wills than I, and they could crush me in like five seconds. <laughs> right. <laughs> But the point there is, is I don't want anybody sitting there going, well, you're discouraging people. Well, no, I'm not trying to discourage people. I'm trying to tell you there is a process. You have to figure out a way that's best for you to improve your will and your sense of your own individuality. Right. You have to forge your own path on that. I, exactly. And I, and I will end this with, you know, the way I believe this really is. Their best bet is to know thyself. Know what it is that you really want. Sitting there saying, hey, I want to be rich, doesn't tell you anything. It doesn't give you a direction to go. No, there's that's too vague. There's not enough details. I mean, rich could be anything. Well, I mean, just like the word wealthy, you know, what some people consider wealthy and what some people don't. Right. That's kind of like harm. What you might consider harm, somebody else might not. True. All right. And then there's different levels of harm. <laughs> Trying to stay away from that, but I'm just saying that everybody's viewpoint is different. Right. To sit there and to assume something like the um, like energy or the manifest destiny works when you have all these other things in place, these other laws and stuff that we know we cannot break. Right. All right. Until we learn how to change XY DNA mm -hmm. to XX DNA, men will always be men. Women will always be women. And that is a staple of nature. Because we sit here and we say we worship nature. And what we mean is that we learn from nature. We look at nature for what the rules are. Right. Nature teaches us what we need to know. Right. And everything I've seen from nature, all mammals are either male or female, end of subject. Doesn't matter how many times you say it. Yes, there are people that can alter their body to look more like females. That's fine if that's what they want to do. No skin off my nose. Right. <laughs> it's not me. <laughs> right. Things I think that can be changed, clothing, dress, the way we perceive that. When we were growing up, short hair. 
for boys was the standard. And anybody who had long hair, big disaster. <laughs> Correct? Uh, well, we got, we got picked on a lot for our long hairs, especially from our fathers. <laughs> Our well, grandfathers. <laughs> yeah, but from my peers, no. No, um, from your peers, no. There were very few peers that did that, but the older generations where it was boys had short hair, girls have long hair, that was broke. Yeah, I mean, my, my daddy never understood why I wanted my hair. <laughs> well, I mean, I, I, again, it's like, where to me, it's like wearing the earrings, guys wearing earrings. Mm -hmm. It was a cultural taboo. We broke it cultural things we can change right i'm out of coffee that's all i got to say about manifest destiny and like energy attracts like energy and thanks for listening join us next week for another episode pagan coffee talk is brought to you by life temple and seminary please visit us at lifetempleseminary.org for more information as well as links to our social media facebook discord Twitter, YouTube, and Reddit. We travel down this trodden path, the maze of stone and mire. Just hold my hand as we pass by a sea of blazing pyres. And so it is the end of our days, so walk with me till morning breaks. And so it is the end of our days, so walk with me till morning